Um, but, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> here's a here's an objection for you, Sam. Okay, I'm gonna get some. Hang on. Oh my oh, God! Are you kidding me? This guy again with the Airbnbs. Are you kidding? Well, oh, you, oh, you know this guy? <laughs> no, you know I'm just saying because someone the other day in my channel brought the Airbnbs again. All right, here you go. Sam, prepare to be refuted. The earliest Christians, the Ebionites, yeah. were you aware that the earliest Christians were the Ebionites? Man, he caught me by surprise. I've never heard of this group. That's it. I'm about to take Shahada. Saw Jesus prophet yeah. and Paul apostate antichrist. Jesus said you have to follow Jewish law word by word, and you can't change tittle <laughs> Paul to convert Gentiles said no okay so notice yes paul right. in his effort to convert the gentiles yeah. Yeah. is the one who changed the words of jesus all right what do you think of that okay uh, vocab you want to say something about the Ebionites? you want to chime in or well i'll just, just like i'll this. say a brief thing but i'll let you do go ahead he didn't he directed whenever to anybody <clears throat> makes over the top and that's <clears throat> certainly what jimmy khan's argument is over the top arguments from the Edom, uh, oh man, yeah, Edomites, from baby, the, from the Edomites. That, my Hebrew Israelite world just crashed in. On no, my head. you just know you're an Edomite. <clears throat> from the Ebion, yeah, what? from yeah. the Ebionites, there, there's a, a serious, serious problem, and it's an information gap. It's yeah. a, it's a literature gap. This is literally, almost completely, not entirely, but almost entirely, an argument from silence. Meaning, the Ebionites, what other documents they left behind? There's a couple pieces that maybe we think they may have been involved with or influenced or we heard about some. That's What's funny is a lot of guys like Jimmy Khan will point to the Ebionites and say, look, that's what you should have been following. Ironically, the way they know about the Ebionites are from what are called the church fathers or from early Christians who wrote. And they wrote polemics against them, speaking about how they were this outward sect. They had a deficient view of Jesus okay. and um, that they didn't, they, they kind of made their own canon, they, all these other issues. The funny thing is a lot of guys like, I bet you Jimmy Kahn doesn't trust the early church's father's theology or their their um, testimony to the fact that the gospels are really the memoirs of the apostles. You know, they're exactly. really what happened, which does not go good with Ebionite doctrine. And so just everyone should know Jimmy Khan is talking about the Ebionites as if he knows this stuff for certain about this group, but it's a massive, massive leap. It's almost like this. The Ebionites are a blank slate in early Christianity. We know two or three things about them. Yeah. And what people who aren't happy with Orthodox Christianity do is they dump this whole thing on this real shaky foundation, which is a lack of information, to say, here's what should have been, here's what was here. Because they have no place to go. It's like a giant X factor they use, and they can just plug in any numbers they want. Yeah. So I hear what you're trying to do. I respect you. At least you know, you're know you trying to mention something historical. But where are you getting oh, your information Sam. about the Ebion Knights from in the first yeah. place? You know, Okay, but, but Sam. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, uh, what, uh, let, let, me, let me offer yeah. a brief commentary real quick. Sure. Um, the situation with the Ebion Knights, <clears throat> it kind of parallels the situation with the Council of Nicaea in that it's used— it's used in an atmosphere. The objection is used in an atmosphere of ignorance. In yeah. other words, the the situations are different in that we we actually know very little about the Ebionites, whereas we know everything that happened at the Council of Nicaea. But it's the same in that your average person that you're talking to knows next to nothing about what happened at the Council of Nicaea, and knows next to nothing about the Ebionites, and this allows it's a version of the 99-1 rule. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then after we're finished live streaming, go watch my video, uh, Islam's 99-1 rule. Uh, it's basically, uh, if you have 100 people, maybe one of those people will actually go and look up what you say. And so since there, since most people don't know about the Ebionites, don't know about the Council of Nicaea, it allows people to make claims about, uh, you know, this is, you know, all these things happened here and the Ebionites were this. And most people don't know how to refute them. And sometimes people like Jimmy Conn, they absorb this information and then they run around spouting it, even though they obviously, obviously, obviously have no clue what they're talking about. So, all right, those are my thoughts on now, there. Just to show you how, yeah, just to sh show you how it backfires against them. If the Ebionites were the true Christians, now, like like vocab said, <clears throat> we we know only a little about them, and you'll even find the church fathers that there was a particular group whom they called the Ebionites that denied the virgin birth. They thought that Jesus was the biological offspring of Joseph, and that they were vegetarians. But notice what he said. Now notice the misinformation. How can they 
be the followers of Jesus if Jesus taught that you're supposed to follow the Jewish law word for word when they were vegetarians? That's number one. Number two, how can you say they're the true followers of Jesus when they denied the virgin birth? If they're the true followers of Jesus, that means the Quran is a lie for two reasons. Number one, the Quran says Jesus was born of a virgin. He had no biological father. But even worse for you, Jimmy Khan, your Quran, chapter 3, verse 50. I'm going to give you your Quran. If these are the true Christians, not only are we false believers, but Muhammad is a false prophet, and he is for other reasons. And the Quran is a false book. Because in chapter 3, verse 50 of the Quran, it says that Jesus, putting words in the mouth of the historical Jesus, Isa ibn Maryam, he says, I confirmed the Torah between my hands, and I've come to make lawful for you some of the things that were unlawful. Go read your Muslim expositors, and they will tell you that Jesus didn't command his followers to simply follow every jot and tittle, tittle of the law because he set them free from many commands of the Moses, uh, of Moses. He abrogated many commands of Moses so that if the Ebonites are the true Christians, then the Quran is false because they denied the virgin birth. And you're saying that they're commanding people to follow the law word for word. But your Quran says Jesus freed his followers from many aspects of the law. And if the Ebonites were the true Christians and vanished, that means Allah failed. Allah lied to Jesus because we we have sessions on this. We have articles on this. According to chapter 3, and I'm going to make it real quick. Chapter 3, verse 55 of the Quran. Chapter 61, verse 14. Chapter 3, verse 55 and chapter 61, 14. It says that Allah swore to Jesus that his followers from the time Jesus was taken to heaven, his followers from that time till the day of resurrection would be dominant, would prevail, and would be uppermost. They would be the victors. But according to you, they disappeared. And Pauline Christianity took over. That means either Allah lied or Paul is greater than Allah. Mm -hmm. I got go. one thing they're going to like. One, one thing you want to add? Into this. Because if, if a Muslim asks the question, if they're implying with the argument, it, the argument was a little poorly worded, but I think we know what he's trying to say. But if a Muslim is trying to imply that essentially these were early Christians who really looked Islamic in their practice. This is the way I usually hear it argued, and I think Sam and David too. One great thing to read to them is this passage from Irenaeus. In Irenaeus, where he wrote a book where he just went all out against all the heresies he could think of. This is section 5, paragraph 1, so uh, 5.1.3. And listen to what Irenaeus says about Ebionite doctrine. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because you're going to see the Ebionite doctrine does not even match with an Islamic understanding of Jesus on one key issue that I'm going to bring no, up. No, they're the true followers. What are you talking about? <laughs> Here man? we go. Good. Vain. So this is a quote from Irenaeus uh, from his document against Pharisees. Vain are also the Ebionites who do not receive by faith into their soul the union of God and man, but who remain in the old leaven of the natural birth and who do not wish to understand that the Holy Spirit came into Mary and the power of the Most High did overshadow her. Point, they deny the virgin conception. Thank you. Therefore also what was generated is holy in the Son of the Most High God and the Father of all who wrought his incarnation and displayed a new generation. So they may say, well, they had a lower Christology that backs, you know, Islamic Christology. But they also yeah. denied the virgin birth. So yeah. they're not really Islamic in their belief. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Good job, Jimmy. Proven too much. You just destroyed the Quran. Good yeah, job. and you got a... Uh,